sein. My little brother was running around, turning random nouns into random sounds into beautiful nouns. Pigtails flying around in the air, and I was never scared. I never got my way, but that was okay. First grade, swinging on the monkey bars, we could be spies one day and princesses the next. The word impossible wasn't in our vocabulary. Second grade, everything changed when my best friend moved away. My life took a 180 and I had to read to hide the pain. Nobody knew how I felt, but I dealt with it on my own. Third grade. 26 dead, nothing more said. We write everything on paper, but their bodies are filled with lead. A government filled with ignorance, caring for choosing money over living, breathing bodies. Fourth grade. Still shook from Sandy Hook, my hands shake like an earthquake right outside. They shake less and less. Maybe this horrible event was a one-time thing. Fourth grade, my hands have finally stopped shaking. Finally, I can go outside without being in fear. And it was such a relief. But oh boy, that, was a, that feeling was brief. 372 mass shootings, killing 475 and wounding 1,870 in my fifth grade school year. My hands started shaking again. What was wrong with society? Sixth grade, I went to a new school with new people but the same fears. By the time of the Orlando shooting, we felt so nervous. We finally, we finally started looking at the issue on the surface. We were cautious to anxious and prepared, but now we were just scared. What could we do? Our school doesn't even listen to our ideas about the heat. How could we do anything? Seventh grade, new school, new people, same worries, sitting and sharing stories. Did you hear about that? Shooting that happened? Different states, different places, same results. Eighth grade, what a year. Now I constantly go to school in fear. First Parkland, now Santa Fe, when will we finally have our say? Kind of from January to May, there have been 101 mass shootings this year. People using fire drills as methods for destruction. Throwing people out into the open and leaving their families heartbroken. Ninth grade. Not much can be said, but before I complete my year, I might wind up dead. Can you see me right here? Yeah, I'm a woman. I do what I want. I have my rights. Yeah, I'm a woman. Guys take that for granted. They think bigger breasts and a bigger butt is the way. This has to change. Yeah, I'm a woman. No, I'm not the tallest. No, I don't know how to sew. No, I know how to cook because I like food, not because a man does. Men can easily walk into a room that women have to crawl into. 321,500 women are taken for granted each day. No one is helping. No one is saving us. No one can. This has to stop. and defecates our minds. 
making all, make, quick to react and lack of restraint, making all of our thoughts and actions vile, ADD, American dream denial, forcing us to believe that nationalism and patriotism comes before kindness, because some pretend the children in the East are less important than the ones in the West, because we let borders define who we are and set our one common trait, humanity, a trait we've seemingly forgotten. Because the air doesn't pick and choose who it blows on. Because the trees don't pick and choose what life it holds and grows. Because the water doesn't pick and choose the fish that can harbor in its entity. Because the animals don't pick and choose where to live because of a flag that separates us. Air, trees, water, animals, we ignore while we fight meaningless wars where no one's even keeping score. And we get to pick and choose what lives are worth more. We scream life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness while all that's resulted so far as of late is unmanaged carelessness. Big politicians tell us our nation is great, but all we have to show for it is phantoms left to haunt school buildings and a president that cares more about lying in his pockets than he does you and me. We chant and preach about our developed society while we sit and stare at Kim Kardashian on TV, letting the lights numb our minds so that we don't have to feel how broken the world is, like brain-dead apes that refuse to see the bigger picture. It was a war on drugs, religion, patriotism, pride, all we see to the wars in the Middle East that go on with countless lives spent. Like we haven't already entered World War III. Russian and North Korean communists threaten all we know and we pretend we're any better because of the pursuit of happiness. It isn't the right to happiness. It's the promise that we can fight for happiness however we deem fit, but never knowing if we can actually reach it. We've chosen to let imaginary lines over earth and sea determine our opinions of each other. Hippocratic heads of nations continuing their mass eliminations that we pretend is better than genocide. Air, trees, water, animals. Air, trees, water, animals. What makes up our earth? We're just scared hurting animals, but we refuse to see it like that. We refuse to believe that borders created by corrupt kings are just there to mark who we are. We refuse to see the issue because it's all about me. We refuse to listen to the children's screams as they're shot or killed or blown to smithereens. We refuse to taste the pollution in the air caused by factories as we stare at our screens. We refuse to smell the intent of politicians as they manipulate our dreams. We refuse to taste, we refuse to feel sympathy to avoid coughing on the smog that floods the streets. We refuse to believe we killed our mother earth because of ADD. are nothing but faint beliefs, crushing me with another reason to not believe. So I'm locked. As roots to this tree begins to rot, it loses its green due to the loss of its key. That allows my mind to secure which assures nothing but protection. So we're locked. Dragged in front of a door sealed with chains that restrain you. But the key doesn't fit. So the monster you feed awaits lurking under that tree. The chains from the door you couldn't unlock rigidly wrap around your hands. Like an arm that's broken and needs a bandage to heal the sudden tension. So we're lost. I know it seems like I'm out of order, but I swear I'm fine. Just behind this word. I'm fine. Yet, I'm not the only one with keys, a door, and a monster ready to control. It leaves me wondering, should I be part of the crowd? Will they judge me? Do they like me? Why is the monster in, why is the monster the only one answering me? Their trees are alive while mine continue to die. Oh anxiety, my friend. Why must you stress me, compress me until fear is the only thing I see? Instead of degrees, a job, or no worries. 
But how can I earn the wings that won't cease to overwhelm me? Cliff. Oh, anxiety, my friend. Must you always try to control me, expose me, provoke me? Lock me into a box until there's nothing left of me. The sound of the keys to the chain sealed with locks of panic ring deafening those that achieve. Click. The world is spinning as my heart is pounding. Nothing but the pain in my back hollering to get moving. But I smash that pain against the wall because of fright. Fright of the danger that awaits patiently by the door that I chose to close just to stop the constant jabs and blows. Click. Determining whether to open or ignore with hesitation. The locks blows of closing or opening are nothing but persistent. Yet not all locks require one key or desire such keys to control. Some keys vary in size, constantly disguised. The constant clicking is a start to a bomb that's awakened by the monster you mistaken. Click, it won't stop. Click as my heart begins to drop. Click, it's locked. Here I stare at a bomb that continues to consume. What happens to that bomb is a question I wish I knew. <clears throat> to a world that assures I'm secure, I'm alright. As long as I'm hidden behind this mask, anxiety won't, won't stop consuming what's ever left in me to grasp. Looks like I'm trapped for life. Click, click, boom. About this atmosphere. I seen people with a gun threatening on the cashier, guns pointing. Robberies become married to money. Women fall in love to robbers, best they're married to dummies. Forgiveness, they enter to world peace. For all those who see the fact that my speech is nothing but a preach, but I'm just here to teach the streets when I speak. That people act fake behind the scenes. It seems like the things that I've seen, like people keep change in a pair of jeans. Addiction, a double perch on either shoulder, your angels crushed by his shivery boulder. Addiction, will never care in what town you were born, it kills your friends and helps you mourn. But I've sworn to endure the pain from these storms, though my pores are torn by swarms of addiction. They're said to be a baffling honey disease, insidious disease, know someone who's battling that beast. So help them, please, please. I should not look 
She's a girl, and so am I. Her red two lips, soft petals. I should not look. She's a girl, so am I. Her hair was so wavy as an ocean wave. I should not look. She's a girl, so am I. The girl and the boy, the regular relationship, the expectation. No place for a girl and a girl. No place for a boy and boy. Gays and lesbian, people present them as sinners or wrongdoing. But love is love. People should have the right to love for they want. Equality. So I can look. She's a girl, and so am I. situation is self-worth based on what one wears? Will anyone believe me? I'm a mouse trembling in the presence of a welcome cat ready to attack. Rape, Rape is, is bad. bad. Like, really bad. Believe me, I get it. I was cat called once. But don't be too over-aggressive about the topic. It will seem like you're taking, taking advantage, advantage of the fact that you were raped. Skirts are short, makeup was abundant, and flirting was present. You all get it, right? Her intentions are more than just a kiss. Her intentions were laced with a desire for more than just a kiss. You're making massively false accusations about me. What she's saying is like a tangled web, a web of lies. What she's doing is digging herself a deeper hole in what she's in now. You all know I'm a good person, so how could you ever believe her over me? How could you believe that I wanted to be raped? If the audience knows the truth, I'll give them the truth. The truth is, I can never forget his eyes. The truth is, I can never forget his hands. The truth is, I can never forget him. The truth is the child of the audience, so they can take care of it. Her story is a forgery of truth. She could have avoided this simple mishap. Such excessive flaunting wasn't necessary. What he has given me are scars, deep scars that I can never forget. He can wake up the morning after and forget it. I have to take the morning after pill and somehow regret it. Not only is this rape culture, but the reality for many women. Consent isn't cool. Consent isn't sexy. Consent means everything. Consent is a basic human right. It is said that rape is caused because of the victim's actions and clothing. No one ever thinks about the little girls that are exploited while wearing overalls and playing with Barbie dolls. The clothes you wear and the things you do are not consent. Rape can never just be bad. It is absolutely sickening and inhumane. Things have got to change. If not, you all can keep expecting more rape poems. Society can keep expecting more rape poems. Thank you. 
feels like anime, I'd rather be something like Deku or Goku. Warriors fighting for what they believe in. Well, my freedom is what I believe in. I never stop fighting for my rights even on my last leg. If dying is the consequence, I'd rather be dead. Why is it that I'm 13 scared to turn 17? Because I'm a black male in America, of course. I'm from where I'm from where running from cops is a neighborhood sport. I'm from America, where ba babies grow up with daddies, grow up without daddies because the justice system cuts their life short. This might as well be a cry for help. Stop killing each other, or we're killing the cancer, no there's racism and police brutality. Black excellence is, is an example we need to set for our next generation. Nice. <laughs> Once 
gold. We all go through pain and strife, but words can hurt like you got cut by a knife. If it's not nice, just don't say it. The message I say is loud and clear, from days to weeks to months to years. So open your mind and open your ears. This nation needs to stick together through sunny days and cloudy weather, through hurricanes and tornadoes. I know as a teen sometimes, you can accidentally cross that line. I also know that feelings are at stake, and I myself have said things I now hate. We all make mistakes in life. We all have regrets. So let us try to join as one, so that bullying can be seen as done and done. This is a social statement.
Looks like I'm all done. so tall, you feel so small. You're a baby raptor entering your first chapter. New kids, new friends, it never ends. More classes, more teachers, quicker, quicker wake up time. Remember going to school at nine? School ends, that's great. No more tests you hate. Now for your three months summer. Great. Seventh grade, a new raptor, no longer a little one. Running for fun. I see you are the big one. So you finish up all your work at school. All those easy classes make you feel so cool. And now you don't have to use your brain as a tool. Now school ends once more. You have one more year. Before you break down, into tears. So you prepared for eighth grade, and I really hope you prayed, because those advanced classes will turn you into prayer. Math develops into algebra, and x equals y, and you're sitting here confused going, what the crap, why? So you go into the being lit, thinking this will be lit, but then they come out saying something that gives you a fit. Write an essay with 1,000 words today. Yay. This class is going to make my hair go gray. Now we do science and things get into waves, and you new rhythms of distance, your mind nods against the concave. So we find out that if the moon gets close enough, the moon will break, and that's tough. So studies, nothing really, nothing's really funny, we learn about our past, and you have to have good notes if you really want to pass. So your workload takes a toll, and it makes you feel kind of dull. Plus, if you mess up, you'll get in your pool. Now your third year goes by, and you tell your friends goodbye, and leave your favorite teacher's cheery eye. So you prepare for what's next, and you aim to be the best, and put your knowledge to the test. Look at my eyes, you look at my thighs. My body has got you so hypnotized. Most girls get catcalled by the age of nine. But don't men realize that each time they catcall us, a piece of our dignity dies? We are told catcalling is a form of compliment. And we are forced to swallow our pride and be polite. And forget we were just catcalled by some old guys. Society, this has to change. We are born into this world being the apple of God's eyes. But once we reach a certain age, our body parts are forced to be rearranged. We are play molded by the hands of society and we are told anyone bigger than a size 4 is ugly. Like being comfortable in your own body is something to be ashamed of. Because we are either too fat or too skinny, there is never an in-between. We either look like a pig or we look like a pig. Society, this has to change. Sexual, sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is an everyday thing. Each time a boy touches us, it stings. And with each touch, it's like they pull us on a string. They pick us out like girls pick out bling. Like when you grab my ass, you complain that I give you sass. To them, we are trophies that are put on shelves to be admired by their friends because that has always been the trend. Society, this has to change. Another victim, yet another girl hiding in the bathroom stall, crying, dying, questioning, am I to blame? Cloaked in shame. Her mouth closed, yet her mouth grew closed, yet her eyes screaming out for help. She's mortified, horrified, and wondering whether she should testify against a guy. We girls must unify to prevent our suicide. Rape isn't a joke. Society, this has to change.
Next up, Molly Harrigan. I don't just listen to your words, I watch your face. I watch how you look at me, how you stare at me because I'm not good enough. I peep your tone, I check your body language, the way people stare at me, the way you talk to me, like I need to be talked to differently. I make notes of your words, saying stuff behind my back, thinking I won't find out. Well, it does and it hurts me more than you think. I hear what people don't hear in your silence. Your, hurts like a, your words hurt like a billion wooden stakes in my heart. The judgment did looks from across the room feel like black abyss. Crawling closer to my heart, I stand tall with a smile on my face, pretending like it doesn't hurt. I put a smile on my face. Most days it's real, others not so much. themselves, must pull the trigger by themselves, not skill. Wait, no, people do that. People make guns, people load guns, people pull the trigger, people kill. Guns don't control people, people control guns. Control knives, control cars, control hands. People control people, people are evil, people are people. So what do we do? Limit the number of phalanges accessible to an individual? One, two, maybe three? That's a great, great idea, which also ban murder, ban crime. That might limit the number of lonely mothers that cry in the middle of the night. Oh, why? Why did he die? The gun told him to, that's why. He was only nine, but it was a nine. Stop blaming the objects, start blaming the criminals. Stop being so subliminal. Our culture is ill. Statistically, gun ownership does not affect homicide or suicide. If I was a dirty murderer and I wanted to kill you, no amount of legislative book BS would have convinced me otherwise. Don't you understand? We live in a deprived society where children grow up without their mothers and fathers. Where is the family? 25 years ago we didn't have school shootings, but now we have them every week. What's changed since then? The guns or the people? I mean, honestly, once you ban the AR-15, you will see that nothing has changed. So, just take them all away. It's time to give up. The pistols, the knives, the rocks, and uh, take my mind too. Here you go. Oh wow. Look at that. It's America. It's dead. Yet the drive within is my only rescue. 
As each day grows older, the darkness in my spirit is lifted. My hopes for being alive is stronger. Finally, a new day seems brighter. I'm sick and tired of seeing a flag at half mass. Paying only halfway for those who have passed, for the awful times that happened in the past, so the lousy days and the memories last. But it's not just a flag. No, it's our flag. I'm sick and tired of guns being distributed like candy because people think they're safer with a firearm handy. I'm sick and tired of people causing public violence. Why can't the real killer be ultraviolet? Because you can call us a country, but it's just a state of mind. I wish that I could stop all these shootings by going back in time. You're looking back at my life, there's no button labeled rewind. And I find it's time to save all our lives with danger looms. Someone has got to do something soon. But it's hard when our country's bumped by this goon. Built like a prune, reputation built off of cartoons. Let this problem float away like balloons. And I'm sick and tired of seeing this goon. I'm sick and tired of innocent kids and teachers dying. And all that our country does is hang our flag halfway and watch it flying. And at first our country was dying to gain freedom, and then we are dying to possess the most wisdom, and then we are dying to keep our military in check, and we are dying to evolve with new tech. But now, our country's just dying, and all I want is to live. Social media allows me to hide behind the screen and smile and laugh when I'm really lying. And all you do is see there smiling, having no idea what's really like. Social media kills more people than people die from suicide. That's 1.53 million more than alcoholics from drinking or getting drunk. And it's like a glass of water tips and falls over and everything falls apart. Like my life after social media destroys my heart. Put your phone down, look up, and turn around. It's easier said than done. It's like smoking a cigarette. It brings you down. It, it takes you to a point in your life where you can turn your life around. You can do anything about it. You just left her to see and pray and stay there for a while with a fake, fake smile. I can't even look at my partner and say I love you without being in a text. Without it coming through my mouth. Social media makes me antisocial. I have this constant smile on my face to replace the emotions that I'm feeling. And I'm hiding inside. It's like dying inside. But I just have to smile because I don't matter. Or my, my Instagram does. <laughs> Thank you. 
stuck in a prison cell, unable to look my problems in the eye and process what is going on. The poison seeping into my brain, the pounding in my head. I can't, I can't take this anymore. Choices, decisions, they take us through the journey of life. Each and every choice opens up a new path. Even each and every choice changes the future. Each and every choice comes with consequence. I've done this so many times before. So how come this time? It's so hard to choose. What is it that we have to do? Everything. Oh. Next up, Curtis and DeJore. Teacher's advice to tell us what to do and not to do when we're playing badly. My older sister is, is the, uh, the captain, high scoring, attacker, and always full of energy. My older sister is the midfielder, and I have strong energy as the captain, but, but full of technique and skill. I'm the goalie. Protecting my family from free kick, corner kick, penalty kick, or any dangerous attack that can eliminate us from the tournament. My mom back in Haiti is our team's secret and powerful players. Even though she's not on the team, uh, she's not on the field every day. Even though she's not on the field every day, she is the most important substitute player in our team. After all we've been through, we're still trying to work as a team to advance in life. Great, good tonight. shooting like it's normal. Will it ever end? Being told to duck down because bullets could be flying over my head. Will it ever end? Not only at schools, at churches where we pray to God, at concerts where we dance and sing and have fun. Everywhere we need to be aware. This world's unsafe. Do we even have faith? Nothing's harder than being told not to be afraid. You take one breath, they probably could hear you. Gunshots go through classrooms and hallways. And all we get is a shadow on the news. It's a fact and it's true. I was not born with a target on my body, so stop aiming at me. I asked the question why. Maybe they should take aim at which governor society. Over a thousand angels in the last five years, and maybe more to come. Because of a gun in our own backyard, Sandy Hook Elementary School, our own hometown, 27 angels gone, Parkland, Florida, 17 lives stolen, sent to heaven. 49 shot, killed and wounded, Pulse nightclub. Nothing tops the fear of death. Is this all a knee slapper? America, you got us. Your stone is killing us. Bullets don't fear us. They're ripping us. 
Children are dropping to the floor. Am I the next shooting range? Am I the next target? Is she the next shooter? Is he the next shooter? Will it ever stop? Will we be forever broken? Although he tore me to pieces, he has made me the person 
I am today, strong and confident. Will I take it as a burden or instead a token? I will always ask, will I be forever broken? A couple beers, a lot of tears. Scream streets. All it took was you to screw it up. Screw up my life, my memories, and my relationship with you. You always said, but never meant I love you. You hurt me in many ways that I can't explain. Somehow, I still feel the pain. Will we be forever broken? The time it took to realize that this was never going to happen was not long at all. Especially since you made me fall and feeling like a broken brick wall that was one strong but not much at all. I felt like a paper ripped into pieces and never to be put back together. This is your choice, not mine, and sorry to say, we can't rewind the time. Will we be forever broken? Did you stop caring about me? You ruined something that could have been great, but sorry to say, it's too late. It took you this many years to realize that you will be nothing more than a person. A person who I thought would be my hero. I waited for days, weeks, and months. No call, no text, not even a single letter. Will we be forever broken? The three words that are spoken as I love you do not even give me a clue what I even mean to you. Always mean and never clean, especially the words that come out of your mouth, it makes me want to scream. Will we be forever broken? The lies you told will never unfold. The constant absence of our fathers left us not even bother to go back and try to fix all the stupid tricks that made me who I am. Dear Dad, will I be forever broken? Hello everyone, I am Ezekiel, and this poem is called Maybe. I've been in and out of friendship since the felt of time pulling at my fingertips. Love is a thread as I pin with passion pieces and fabrics of friends. Friends that tamper with ties as I forget to hide my scissors. I think to myself, maybe it's the fashion that keeps them running. Really, maybe it's the clothes. Or maybe it's advertising, could I still have the nerve to embroider, crochet, and sew? A unique ensemble for all to know is actually called confidence. Brighter than a thousand suns and colder than any precipitation. But if it's rain, sleet, or snow, it's still yet. Beautiful material always comes with a big price that I seem to pay daily. Maybe it's because I have words like velvet and a care like silk. With the red ravishing velour, lust for love that all seem to adore. This fashion nourishes my hungry and curious intellectuality like a mother's milk. As I try to embed stones, crystals, and gems to the bottoms of my feet. Hoping I now walk a path that is crystal clear. But it seems this master seamstress has stumbled upon the diamond of the what? It's intentions dripping of purity and purity that is uncut. The beauty bestowed by this being one so thick. I am your night skies, you are my moon. Reflected in the womb, we shall become one adhesive by lip. Maybe it's because I am a lunatic in your presence. The cloth was cut somewhere from above and I've fallen for it with all of my essence. I will still stick with you even if we push a shove. There's no emotion wrapping up my, my body. What is it called? Is it love? Maybe. Really, maybe it might be. I never thought I would find a soul that would be just like me. See, when we sew together, I find myself so free. And I know you understand and hold my hand even if I'm acting crazy, but maybe it's the way your eyes twinkle, just like mine. Maybe it's the way I pluck at your fabric fingers waiting for ours to intertwine. Or maybe it's the way your smile rolls upon your lips with such grace. Or maybe it's the way I like you a little too much, but I have no time to waste, see. Scared of loving you, I can never be. My only fear is if you're really loving me. Maybe I'm too foolish to see because your pink voice makes me spin better than any melody. Or maybe this and maybe that. I'm still on the stage and I can't deny the fact that I love you. And maybe I'm tripping, waiting for you to catch me. Thank you, that's maybe.
body's artwork, a place where my emotions reflect on color palettes, a face stitched with threads and labels that drench my skin. My smile is like a Monet. From far away it is beautiful, but when close up it is dreamt, drenched with anxiety and confusion that refuses to open up. My arms are filled with the cans of candles from the hands of Andy Warhol. My thigh gap is like the size of Mona Lisa's smile. And I thought that the only way to happiness with my body was through a Visa card until I learned of the anorexia and bulimia. People say that my body is perfect, although they don't see the pictures of girls in Teen Vogue. They don't see how shopping is uncomfortable and how with every hanger I only want to inhale vegetables. They don't see how Edgar Degas' ballerinas dance on my skin and make me shameful of my stretch marks. They don't see the vines of Van Gogh's flowers rip away my dignity and make me cry over my body's garden in the shower. They don't understand how Seventeen Magazine is my own personal rabbit hole that makes me very late for important dates like self-love and hopes and dreams. They choose to ignore how calories invade my body, like not RCPing and still showing up for a party. Young women like me grow up in a society where if you don't look like Gigi Hadid, you should be ashamed of your body. Young women like me learn to hate. Hate we are, because society controls our actions like the backseat passenger trying to steer the wheel of a car. The trees planted in the ground of the status quo are rooted with parasites. Although the vines that curl from my fingers and go within my body hurt and make me reject the food inside. But they won't tell. I won't tell. Scout's honor, right? Marcos Chacon. Just a quick disclaimer. This, this poem is written in the perspective of a white person. Yeah. They're crying out, Black Lives Matter. But I don't say it back. Is it okay for me to say? I don't know, so I watch and stand in front of a line of police that look the same as me, only separated by a badge, a baton, a can of mace, a mask, a shield, a gun with gloves and hands that gives an alibi in case somebody dies behind a bolt that flies and takes another child's life on sight. I want to take a stance because we are not free. And I thought about it. We are not weak. White supremacy isn't just the white dude in Idaho. White supremacy protects the privilege I hold. White supremacy is the soil, the foundation, the cement, and the flag that flies outside of my home. White supremacy is our country's lineage, designed for us to be indifferent. My success is a product of the same system that let off Jared Wilson, guilty. We want to dress like, walk like, talk like, dance like. Yeah, we just stand by. We take all we want from black culture, but will we stand up for black lives? We stolen the music, the moment, the magic, the passion. The culture was never ours to begin with. We've stolen everything from them. And I doubt we'll give it back. Because everything that we have is everything they lack. Thank you. Socks from low light clumps of coal, black, gray. Rocks. There are so many, I think we already have plenty. So many different shapes and sizes, with small or big and round and flat. They're all beautiful but ugly. They help me when I'm sad and turn me to glad. Rocks. They're around us everywhere. They're like beds, sitting there in the nice cold air. R for relaxing, O for overs of happiness they bring. C for clumps like Christmas coal, cake kicking them down lightly as they roll. As for sitting and singing and bringing me quiet music to my ears, oh rocks, 
they can all last so long, even a year. Some are happy, others are sad, but they're all here, so they're glad. We wouldn't be here without them. They are our pebbles and stones. They are the ones who made our homes. They're all different, and that's a good thing. Some of them can be rings and showing off their bling. Rocks, I'm just like them, like a bass drum ready to outcome. They want some attention, just like me. Rocks, they're also magnificent, while at the same time they're innocent. Stones and boulders, they're strong and nothing can break them. Their straight face makes them fearless. Pebbles, these are the ones that are more soft. They get really hurt when they are tossed. The thing is that they're all the same, so no one here is to blame. When you get to meet them, they're really nice, but each one of them has a little spice. They want to hurt people when they're mad, but not out of me, because when they see me, they're carefree. Rocks, they're not as soft as socks, more like pieces of iron and sand, petting them softly in your hand. Rocks.
face full of makeup, looking like a clown. Am I pretty now? Hair clogging the drain, braids are going insane. Am I pretty now? Skin tight clothes, blood flowing looking like a red rose. Am I pretty now? Glass shattered, feelings tattered, heart shattered. Am I pretty now? Sticks and stones can't compare to the pain of my skin and bones. Am I pretty now? Cuts and bruises, I'm still confused then. Am I pretty now? We're forced to put on a mask and be someone we're not. Just to feel like we belong, while others feel as if they ain't nothing at all. Beauty seems to be a race, but it takes its time and place. Beauty runs within, not just along our skin. Beauty isn't based on curves. It's based on what you've learned. Heart of gold, face of an angel. She was a pierce in the mall, yet she didn't feel pretty at all. Now she's gone. Every 40 seconds a person commits suicide. That's about 3,000 people per day worldwide. What's causing this self-induced genocide? So many cutters and so much self-harm. So many people I know with cuts on their arms. Depression. It's not about wants and attention or love and self-aggression. It's about all your despair causing you self-oppression. Connecticut has one of the highest suicide rates, not to mention we have the most calls in suicide prevention. I don't need to call anybody out. It's not my intention. I just want to let you know that there is intervention. Hear me out. Please change your designations. Together we can make a road to progression. Can you hear the cries for help? Do you hear them screaming? Their silent screams, like an ocean trapped in a bottle. Maybe it's about looking for someone to help them subside it. Maybe people are listening, but they just don't know what to do about it. What does depression feel like? Depression is... It's untold tears, the skies will smile. It's opening your eyes in the morning only to wake up in a nightmare. It's being surrounded by everyone and no one at the same time. It's like being suspended above an open, never-ending abyss. Depression is the burst of an abyss inside you. Suicide is. It's not about killing yourself, it's about killing the hollow within yourself. But is it really? You feel like a nuclear winter, but their words seem more chilly. Scars on your wrist only remind you of your mistakes. Each drop of blood on that blade contains feelings no one can explain. Mental and physical pain, anger, pain, clothes, stains, scars remain, the ages came. Or has it? The end is near but not quite. Looking down from the immense height, you reminisce, wondering if this choice is right. But the darkness starts to consume the light. Soon that last bit of light becomes bright. As clouds continue to shroud you into the dark, your faith is appearing like your shadow. Now your choice has been made without remark as one foot steps out into the hollow. Goodbye world, goodbye everybody, the world will be better without me. But, pause, rewind a little bit. Remember all those times you had a genuine smile? I know it's been a while. But your life still has meaning. Trust us when we say, thousands of us have felt this feeling. Menacing, mendacious, mundane people who with their sadistic smiles find your pain appealing have nothing on you because you're stronger than that. And they have their own problems they've been concealing. Consider the fact that you're still alive as a blessing. And consider all the mistakes you've made as a life lesson. There's, There's no use in putting a permanent, permanent solution to a temporary problem. 
even if the solution to you is to clear the white class, in just like those 40 seconds, this too shall pass. Don't be a statistic.
Why would all the stars in the sky be the only one I see? You take me in and out of constellations all around the solar system, which then makes my heart sprout fill and scream. Sometimes I wonder that if I ever stop thinking about you, it will float away like the other objects in space. It's one of the reasons I cling on to you so much. I don't want your bright light to go away and for a shadow to be cast on me. I don't want you to just be a very close memory. Stars last long till they burn out, he said. Why are you here then? Why when there are other corners you can float to? Why with all the stars in the sky do you still cross my mind? Why in this whole atmosphere, this whole universe, do you still manage to be in my head? Is it because I can't let go? Answer me. Why won't you speak? Because you're a star? Well, if you're a star, I guess I'm a star also. Oh, how you sparkle like all the other stars in the stratosphere. I only wanted to go to space, he said. Space? Will you blend in with every other ball of shimmering gas and heat? Why? Stop sizing yourself to smaller possibilities when you can be brighter, bigger, and better. It's not about appearances, he said. No, I never said appearances is what it's all about. Don't you understand? If you're a star, then I'm a star. Not I'll only ever be a star with someone who understands how much they really matter. And that's what it's all about. Every day we look in the mirror to find our reflection. We come to school to be talked about, for people to start rumors, traversing through the halls, conversing among the people. People want to clean their slate and start anew, changing their appearances, fracturing the mirror. More and more the mirror fractures. People's words crumble their opponents, making them feel worthless, making their minds deteriorate, filling their brains with sadness. All they can do now is hide. Finding a way to fill the void, wishing it was all a bad dream. They wake up, oh. All they, can, all they can do now is fall asleep and try not to wake up. They wake up and decide today is the last day on earth, arriving at school hoping it was all just a bad dream. The day ended. Speeding to the bus, telling everyone he would kill himself. <laughs> but nobody believed him. They felt like an atomic bomb ready to explode. He hopped off the bus, sprinting home. He was ready to erase himself from the world like a misspelled word, ready to be corrected. He found his father's pistol with one bullet. That was all he needed. He pulled the gun up to his head, leaving a tear to slide down his face. He pulled the trigger and he ended all the pain, suffering, and sadness. Why fracture yourself when you're already whole? Marcella Sweeter. by your own life to see. I have a break. 
brain. Here I'm sitting, thinking, and how we both have skin. Maybe not the same color, but at least we have skin. I'm human. I don't stand like you, but I still look like you. Last I recall, I have a head, eyes, and arms. I don't fly like you. I fly higher than you. I'm human, just like you. Then why do you look down on me when I roll into a room? My smile my blue, but the stairs aren't fair. I'm human. I'm not made out of steel. I have a glowing heart inside of me. But last I recall, you do too, and you're human. So wouldn't that mean you have it too? You see me climbing and say I inspire you, but how do I inspire you? I don't, I'm questioning if I should be offended. I'm human, just like you. How do I inspire you? Just because I'm sitting, it's not like I'm spinning, my head spinning around. You either say I inspire you, treat me like I'm broken. Well, let me remind you, you're human, and we're all broken. But maybe I am broken, maybe I'm broken. From all the times you say I broke them for attention. Or, may, or maybe I laugh, or maybe you'll just never know. I'm not, I'm human, I'm not immortal. I act like what you say doesn't bother me. But I'm not the Tin Man, and I'm not the Saboteur Brothers. Humanity shuts off. Every time you ask, every time you ask, the scar goes deeper inside of me. Just, just that the human eye can't see. I don't blame you for wanting to know. But maybe next time I hang around more than a second or so, I don't care what you want to know. Although I do think it's fair you know my name first, Nora. to the rest of my body because my thoughts are witchcraft. Witchcraft's intoxication lowers your hibernation, increases my concentration, and my campus condensation evaporate meditation. Rain down on the entity of my enemy's precipitation. Watch you rise up like a hand for participation. Pardon my instant patience. Wait for my moment and pray my inner predators awaken my brains. Detrimental to the rest of my body because my thoughts are witchcraft. Witchcraft, some problems with no solution to solve on my field. I need a soul because I need to resolve on my brains. Detrimental to the rest of my body because my thoughts are witchcraft. Witchcraft, some love I haven't figured out yet. Damn my devious dangers to determine the destination of a deep dirt I call truth. Claim a lot of things in this world. Most perceptions of what you up saying and what you maintain are often portrayed incorrectly. And here I stand with a lot of baggage, claiming I am not a menace, not a misuse of certain objects, but merely a suitcase tossed around, trapped up in my own body, zip, tied, captured, and captured, officially became the captive, captive, part of my blood sparkling and cracking, two ways split between two flags. And even then I ask, what is the worth? Because my brain's detrimental to the rest of my body because my thoughts are witchcraft. Witchcraft, some other stuff I haven't figured out. Thank you. So 
not memorize this poem. I wrote it last night. My apologies. It's like some of it's memorized. Don't apologize. Y'all in the back can hear me? Yeah. Then no, I don't. All right, so. I am me, myself, and I am done delegating to the shelf who me, myself, and I am, and I am danced upon by those that seek to amuse, though they do not amuse me, they use my inner beauty, and once they experience any dissonance, they put me to the side. Me, myself, and I see people, beginners and experts, try to press me, thinking they know my ABCs, when please, I myself know not of my Ds through Gs, but what I do know is perspective. When I am out of tune, out of hand, and out of mind, I still know my true form. Strings may have changed, but my ideals are still the same. Hammered ideals that are key to who I am. And me, myself, and I understand that I need some more to f feel fulfilled. But I don't know of that which can. Yet, me, myself, and I am not done saying what else I am. Me, myself, and I am who I am. And that is the sound that comes to your ears through the wind I cannot control. Me, myself, and I know that some may find that this is not the music for them because lullabies and melodies are, and all of their friends are me, myself, and I in the wonders of music when I do not pretend, when I don't overextend who I am because I am composed of music. I am composed of ideas that are harmonious to who I am. And I, me, myself, and I understand that there is more in life I need to feel fulfilled, but I know of not that can. But I know when I see it that I'll know. Because me, myself, and I think I'm close to knowing. See, me, myself, and I have stumbled upon an epiphany. See, me, myself, and I am in love with poetry. I am written as a dot to poetry's eye. I am held as the apple to poetry's eye. I am the cross T across the city, the bar that where I speak. Me, myself, and I know about me. Myself, I am the authority when I write. I show my skin when I write. I bear my teeth when I write. And bear with me, for when I write, me, myself, and I delve into I my life on a molecular level. My cells revel, boil and sell even the slightest of emotions to the highest bid. You get me myself a trophy because my poetic pride is a prize prevalent in my emotions. Personality, persisting like the right pedal on a piano. Pressure me, get a melody because if I myself know not of my D's through G's, I am me, myself, and I am the piano, the music, and the poetry. Yeah!
We want to be to include point. Yeah! 